Hey, Steve, I'm Jimmy James. Remember me? Uh, I guess not. Hey, how come you haven't been putting the paper out for me in the morning? Yeah? Well, try to remember, will ya? How'd you expect a working Joe to make an honest living? You don't put the paper out, I'm out of a job. So what? You don't get paid for picking up papers anyway. The Sentinel building burnt down. What the heck else am I supposed to do? Listen, start putting that paper out and everything will be Jake, okay? That's all I want. That and a pair of sneakers. Walking this route every day has worn holes in mine. Say, you got any spare sneakers? Oh, gee whiz. Look, if you find any, I'd be willing to trade you for them. Something really neat of Think about it. See you later, alligator. Hello, Steve. Welcome to the House of Flame, as we like to call it. Oh, cut it out, Spots, honestly. But once he gets barking, a good piece of meat is the only way to shut him up. There you go, Spot. So, Steve, bet you don't remember me. Heard about that short in the old wiring. I'm Fire Marshal Sparky, head of your fire department. Please, it's not the subject, it's the process. Don't be such a party pooper, Steve. We're talking about our Besides, we haven't had a fire in Harvard since the newspaper building burned down. Though I'll admit that the Wasp Woman's place is one big accident waiting to happen. Isn't that right, Spot? Hi, what's your name? Karen. What are you doing? Playing. My mom is working, so I gotta stay out of her hair. Wanna play? Not now, maybe later. Okay. Bye-bye. Hello there, Steve. Here for lunch? No, just here looking around. Though I'm not entirely sure where here is. Oh, I forgot. You're playing your little amnesia prank. Well, boy. This is DNA's diner. Isn't that right, Edna? Don't listen to Sheriff Dwayne. This is Edna's diner. But ever since the E burned out on the sign, they've been giving me a hard time. Now don't be like that, Edna. It's a great place to eat, which is good, since it's the only place to eat and harvest. Stop on by any time, Steve. Oh, Steve, what are you doing sneaking up on me like that? God, for a second I thought you were Mr. Johnson. Ah, <sighs> what would you like to order? Sure, and my name's Edna Fitzpatrick. I'm not the one with amnesia. Then you believe me. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. I guess I've changed. I'm not kidding. Now, Steve, faking amnesia won't help anything. If you don't want to marry Stephanie, then don't. But don't play sick, for heaven's sake. I'd expect that from Karen, not an 18-year-old. You've met Karen, my 8-year-old.
Other than the diner, she's all I have. There isn't a nicer girl in Harvest than Stephanie, Steve. You should be grateful that she's promised you her hand. I don't remember that happening, Edna. Honestly, you men are so childish. I don't know what it is about marriage that turns even the bravest man into a coward. I was going to marry Karen's father when he just up and ran out on me one night. I heard that he joined the lodge, but if he did, I never saw him come out again. Even Sheriff Duane wasn't able to find out what happened to him. Mr. Johnson has a, a liking for me. I call it a crush, but that's too innocent a word. He's a bitter man with too much time on his hands. He's never gotten over being rejected by the lodge, and there's something unwholesome in the way he looks at me. I'm always glad when the sheriff comes in every day at noon. The lodge is the repository of all wisdom. You should join the Order of the Harvest Moon, Steve, and soon. Why? For God's sake, what is it about this place? The wheat ripens and waits not for the scythe. The farmer who waits too long, it were better that he use the scythe to rip his own stomach out than to stay his scythe when the wheat ripens. The harvest moon wanes and then comes winter. An empty belly, the body sun's belly, gurgling within or bloody on the ground. What does it benefit a man if he gains his soul and loses the world? You hunger. Feed yourself before it's too late. Oh. Edna? Steve. Well, what happened? Were we talking about Boyle? Or was it Karen? You seem strange there for a minute. I'm sorry. I'm under a lot of stress. Running this diner all alone. Forgive me. Sorry, I missed that. Too noisy in here. 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 Stop by any time, Steve. Steve, good of you to drop by, big guy. Haven't seen you since graduation. A lot of changes, I hear. You could say that. Good, good. That's a nice part of my job, turning fine young men and women out into the world and then watching them prosper. Of course, I was able to reach more people at the old Sentinel, God bless her. But then again, I never got to see the results of my work up close before. Who are you? You know very well I'm Mr. Harold, principal of Gain Memorial. Steve, I've heard about this amnesia nonsense. I had hopes you'd be in the lodge by now, fine young fellow like yourself. But now, I think maybe you need a little more quality time. Why do you keep calling me big guy? A sign of respect, lad. As principal, my station is higher than yours now. But you never know what the future holds, so you should always hedge your bets and pay tribute to your inferiors. You never know who will come to power, or who, even now, wields it behind the scenes. For all I know, you might already be a member of the Order with access to the Lodge. 
If that were the case, you'd be my superior, and I'd be all that much better off having shown you respect and spent some quality time with you. Surely mine is the most important position in harvest. The ability to mold young minds. That's power. You might think Sheriff Dwayne's the most important man here, big guy. But he only deals with my failures. When I do my job right, the Sheriff never sees a thing. Boy, I sure miss the old newspaper. The sheriff never did investigate that fire properly. Call it a newspaper man's instinct. Though I can't imagine why Sheriff Duane would cover up anything. I mean, the only ones who stood to profit from the newspaper going out of business was the owner of the TV station. And Mr. McKnight had an airtight alibi. Still, if not for the fire, I never would have wound up as principal of Gene Memorial. Gein Memorial? Sounds like a cemetery or a hospital, not a school. This institution was named for a great man, whose first name escapes me. He epitomized the great potential within us all, big guy. I hear there's an honorary plaque commemorating him within the lodge. What do you mean, quality time? Some, like Miss Whaley, favor stern discipline, corporal punishment, as a means of socialization. Myself, I temper discipline with love. Quality time can be such a warm, sharing experience. After just a few sessions, you'd stop this amnesia nonsense and become a productive member of society and a fit candidate for the law. Big guy, borrowing some quality time, the greatest gift I can bestow upon you as your former principal is a word of advice. Join the order of the harvest moon at any cost. Within the lodge lies your future, and without dust. You turned out pretty good. Except for that amnesia nonsense. It's not nonsense. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Maybe you need a little straightening out. Oh, the things I could do to you. You'd be a much finer young man. With just a little quality time. Drop in again soon. Adult education is a wonderful thing, as is adult quality time. Discipline. Thank goodness you weren't a sulky bear. 
you were always a smiley bear. Then, you remember me? Not as such. So many pupils do, and they come and they go. But I can always spot those who were nice boys. You can tell from the forehead. The lows. Right, class? I'm glad you stopped by, Stephen. Would you care to say a few words to the class about civic responsibility? Not really. I was just passing through. Oh, but you must, Stephen. A positive role model might be just the thing to inspire these little monsters. Stephen, have you any questions for me? Or shall I continue with class? Ask away, then. We don't practice corporal punishment here. I've never believed in that old adage, spare the rod and spoil the child. A rod is too thin. But a baseball bat... That bridges the generation gap quite nicely. Oh dear, Colonel conducting another air raid drill. Everyone into the hallway, quick! If an A-bomb hits, what good is it gonna do to duck and cover? Stars, that was exciting. This launch, what do you know about it? The building itself, like Harvest, was constructed with a specific purpose in mind. That noble intent is known only to those within the Order. You're at about the right age to join me, Stephen, and you will do so if you care about your future. Can you tell me anything about Harvest? was founded by the Order of the Harvest Moon about a hundred years ago. For what purpose? Why, I'm sure you'd have to ask them. You'll find the members of the Order at the Lodge. Stop by any time, Stephen. How's your father? Is he better? Uh, about the same, I guess. He's been away from work for weeks. And when I call your house, your mother won't let me talk to him. I haven't seen him either. 
This is a fine kettle of fish, I must say. Though I am glad to see you taking an interest in the business in your dad's absence. Who are you? Aw, oh, Steve, I didn't want to believe that amnesia hokum. Now you're saying you don't remember your pal Pat O'Reilly? What exactly is wrong with your dad? I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it too much, Steve. You should be thinking about running the family business one day. That, getting into the lodge. You may come to realize that this business is not for everybody. Just ask your poor, ill dad. It takes dedication and a strong stomach. A lot of times, when I'm finished scrubbing up and digging the bits of intestine out from my fingernails, I must confess I don't have much appetite for red meat. But red meat is one of the principal food groups, and you've got to have it. So when you can do this all day and help yourself to a juicy red steak afterwards, then by golly, you can call yourself a butcher. Of course, amnesia would certainly help that, wouldn't it? Come to think of it, I don't see any cattle around here. Where do you keep the animals? <laughs> Does it matter? The end product is all the customer cares about, Steve. And we only carry the finest meat. Only the juiciest cuts. Once you take over the business, you'll realize the importance of maintaining quality while cutting costs. We know what we're doing here, Steve. If we didn't, would the lodge use us to cater their affairs? Your father's very particular about the profit, Steve. No freebies for anyone. But seeing how you're his son, if you'll bring written permission from your father, I'll give you the meat. There are certain tricks of the trade, Steve. Once your dad gets better and you start working in here cutting up the meat, you'll be privy to them. There's always cheaper, better ways to do things, if you're creative. You may come to realize that this business is not for everybody. Just have a strong stomach. A lot of times when I'm finished scrub, I must... But red meat... Then by golly, you can call yourself a butcher. Of course, amnesia would certainly help that, wouldn't it? Look, I'm not kidding about the amnesia. Why won't anyone believe me? Well, you always were such a kidder, Steve. Funny how that's beginning to sound like a stock answer. Like it was... coached. You sure are acting like a kidder, son. With your dad ill, you're gonna need to start behaving like an adult. Especially if you're gonna take over the family business. The Order of the Harvest Moon sponsors a weenie roast on the lodge grounds every summer, which we cater. So they tend to get their meat elsewhere the rest of the year. I wonder why. Heck, the best way to find out is to sign up with them. They're a great organization, Steve. They do wonderful work, just like us butchers. They do what needs to be done and expect nothing in return. Then how do they support themselves? Membership dues? From what I hear, the work is its own reward. Don't read you, Steve. Don't be such a stranger, Steve. And my best to your dad. Keep your distance, son. I wouldn't want to have to blow your head off. That makes two of us. So you're the amnesiac, huh? 
Just another draft dodging ploy the way I see it. But at least you're not an alien. You see their ships every now and then. Sometimes swell bags one in the woods. Who are you? Colonel Buster Monroe, commander of the Harvest Nuclear Missile Installation. Keeping America safe from those who would dye our flag red, white, and pink. These are nuclear missiles? Goddamn right they are. Every one of them ready to rain death on the Ruskies. All I gotta do is hit the button and blammo! The price of vodka goes through the roof. Along with the vodka. Well, I suppose you have, you know, safeguards against accidents? Safeguards? Don't be such a weak sister. There are no safeguards. This is the 50s. Then, you have sole control of the, uh... That's right. Been in charge here since WW2, when I got my lower torso shot off in the war. Those panty wastes in Washington wanted to stick me behind a desk. To hell with that! They owed me! I left my legs in Dusseldorf. They owed me! Of course, they felt that after the trauma of having to crawl from Germany to England trailing my intestines behind me, was too emotionally unstable to continue in the military. That's why they gave me this nice cushy job and put me in charge of the nuclear missiles. You say before you came to harvest your lower torso was shot off in the war? That's right. supposed to ring the bridge with the carriers and sandals between my knees as I crawled in the muddy mud. I didn't see the Jerry taking aim at me with his machine gun until half of me was flying through the air. With a quick spray of bullets in a straight line, it shot my body clean in two. My lower body landed at that Jerry's feet. I can still hear him laughing as I started crawling in the general direction of England calling behind me in broken English. My friend, where is your legs? Looky, what have we here? Some legs? Hey, did they live on lose some legs? I'll never forget looking back over my shoulder and seeing that crowd doing the can-can with my legs. A few weeks later, with all my compass and a pair of nylons, I made it back to safety. Now the crowds are our friends and the Tommy bastards are our enemies. But even so, there's at least one crowd out there that I'll never invite over to Sunday dinner. Aside from your Kami bastard, your alien from another planet is the greatest threat to our democratic way of life. Did you know that 90% of sightings occur within the area of military installations? Hell, I shoot at them whenever I see their ships fly over. But my bullets ping harmlessly over their hulls. I suspect those things operate out of the lodge. And just try to convince anyone in Harvest of that. I tell you, son, a nuclear holocaust would be preferable to a takeover by big-headed aliens from Pluto. Lucky for us, I'll be making that call when the time comes. Son, when you've had your body shot in half, you know a thing or two about fear. You learn that when something actually happens, it's never as bad as you imagine it would be. Oh sure, I can't write my name in the snow. I had to shell out a few simoleons for portable IV drips, colostomy bags, and so on. The pain is hardly what I'd call constant. I have my good days when I pass out completely. We're never asked to endure more than we're capable of handling. Folks would die in a nuclear holocaust, but nobody would die who wasn't going to die anyway, sooner or later. And the rest of us? Why, we'd take a little R&R &R at the old radiation bunker, climb out in two weeks, and go back to work, refreshed and ready to contribute as productive members of society. Makes me wonder why I don't just push the button. Take me a nice vacation. Can you give me any reason why I shouldn't?
right soldier. I'm sorry. Sometimes the intense pain clouds my mind. The kookaburros start whispering to me about the pretty mangoes in the high trees. And I know they can see me. They see all of us. Can't you hear them? Chattering with the llamas behind our backs? They want our cornflakes, but they won't take the milk! Have you lost your mind? You think you can toy with me just because I have no Lord Tarso, you damn kid, you? Or maybe you're one of those commie bastards. Have you lost your mind? You think you can toy with me just because I have no Lord Tarso, you damn kid, you? Or maybe you're one of those commie bastards. Have you lost your mind? You think you can toy with me just because I have no Lord Tarso, you damn kid, you? Or maybe you're one of those commie bastards. Frankly, all these questions are making me a little suspicious of you. Maybe you're one of those pink-blooded Americans. Can you give me any reason why I shouldn't shoot you right now? I appreciate your honesty, comrade.